Speaking of good tag teams, House of Black versus FTR. 25 minutes they got for this match. Yeah. It was great. I mean, it, it was great. It probably would have been better at 15, mm-hmm. but it was great for 25. And they had just had a long time, and uh, Cash's wife and daughters were there. I will tell you my one complaint, because I didn't mind the length at all. All right. But there was one thing that kind of irritated me. So they got the heat on Dax, and they did a great job teasing this hot tag. He tries to get it. He gets cut off. He tries to oh, get it. Oh, I know it, what you're talking about. He gets cut off. He tries to get it. He gets cut off. And finally, he breaks free, and as he leaps to tag... His partner gets booted off the apron. Mm-hmm. They get the heat on him again. I was like, that was a goddamn good spot. We'll be right back after the break. Mm. They fucking come back, and Cash is making his hot tag. He's already made it. He, after all that, all right. after teasing it, and teasing it, and teasing it, and taking it away and teasing it, they finally did the hot tag during a commercial break. Don't tell me about fucking picture-in-picture. Picture. I'm not watching picture-in-picture. Picture. I'm just not. And it's tiny in the corner of the screen. Hey, you know what? Even if you do want to watch picture in picture, you know what you don't hear? The crowd pop when mm. a guy gets a hot tag. Yeah. So it was like, what the fuck did you do that during the break for? Irritating. I do Other wanna, than that, great. I will, I will also, as long as, we're, as long as we're picking nits here, that, that hot tag you mentioned, but ended with the uh, boot in the corner, the knocked axe off the apron. Cash uh, has taken out the House of Black, and he's in the corner, and he wants to crawl for this hot tag, but get cut off. And he starts to crawl, and he looks around at the House of Black and not in the ring. And he crawls like one more knee length forward, and he takes a look at the House of Black and nowhere to be seen. He crawls just a little bit more. He's looking around like, where the hell are these goths? And if he, go- if he goes any farther, he will make the tag. So he has to, has to just collapse in the middle of the ring. So yes, the uh, House of Black were a little late on the draw there, and made Cash look kind of goofy. But it did work in the end. Okay, since you guys found something to nitpick, I will find something to nitpick myself. A bunch of assholes we are. A lot of nitpicking of an awesome match, quite frankly. (laughs) It it really is. Brody King came down at the end. Vinny will describe it in a minute. And he tosses the chair into the ring. And Bryce, the referee, looks at the chair on the mat. Brody King has let go of it. Why didn't the ref throw the chair out of the ring? He just let it sit there. And then it got used in the match. No, he was looking at the chair and chastising Brody King. I don't know. That's so fake. Hey, let's talk about what was great, though. Everything let's, else. This was yes. a great match. Yes. It was. So uh, eventually, as noted, Dax did get his hot tag. He runs wild, but he gets cut off, and he's going back and forth for a long time. The power and glory plex is hit, but Buddy cuts off the pin with a meteora. Cash tries a dive onto both Goths, but they catch him, throw him over the announced desk. This isolates Dax in the ring. And they grab chairs. They're staring down the family. Uh, Dax needs to make his comeback. They get the shatter machine, but Malachi breaks up the pin. So FDR disposes of him with a stuffed pile driver on the apron. Hmm. Place is just going nuts for all this. Nuts! Here's where Brody King comes out. He is promptly attacked by Daniel Garcia. And uh, Buddy gets a few moves on Dax in the ring, but Dax cuts him off, pins him with a cradle, turn into an excellent tag team match. Dude, the finish was awesome. Buddy power bombs him. He tries to do the jackknife cradle, but as he rolls through, Dax pushes him into his sunset flip and pins him. Hmm. Finish was absolutely awesome. And yes, this was in their hometown. Their families were on the line. It has the story, yes. <laughs> if FTR lost this match, they had to disown their families and move out. Right. Give me a fucking break. But anyway, they won in their hometown, which is good. And then the House of Black makes this big comeback afterwards, and they destroy Dax in front of his wife and his child. Mm-hmm. They crush them, they beat them, and they leave them for dead as the show goes off the air. And I realize they're setting up for like a stipulation match and everything, but bro, I've been saying it. WWE used to do this, and people hated it. And so AEW began, and they never did this. Mm-hmm. They never beat people in their hometown. They never beat people down and humiliated them in their hometown. They never did that. And then at some point over the last year, everything has done this big 180. Now, in WWE, people win 90% of the time in their hometowns. And on AEW, it's just they get beaten and beaten and beaten or beat down in their hometowns. 
It's incredible. It's a total 180. And I don't want to hear anybody defending this shit because everybody complained about it when WWE did it. And everybody praised it when AEW didn't do it. And now AEW is doing it, so don't tell me it's cool now. Okay? Because I know I'm going to get this. Anyway. I don't think uh, Dak should have smartened up his kid. She showed absolutely zero fear about the House of Black. Um, I when, disagree completely. When Malachi was running at them, she just was grinning. Well, you know, that's true. But you know what? I've seen many traumatized children. Sure. I much prefer this. Like on NXT? Yes. Anyway, I, the match was fantastic. That They're... Their finisher where uh, Dax hits the uh, superplex and Cash comes off the uh, with a splash. That's a great, great double team move. Although I didn't think Malachi got his knees up at all. But um, they, they were they were claiming that, uh, yes, Malachi got his knees up and Dax or Cash kind of grabbed his ribs. Whatever. It didn't matter. They, yeah, it didn't matter in the end. It was it was a it was a really great match. Yeah. I also was wondering what the heck happened with the pyro because the smoke just kind of hung in the air above the ring for most of the match. Did they forget to turn a fan on or something? I don't know. It was weird. I don't know. You didn't notice that? No, uh, I, I, I did not personally. I saw actually, I think it was a pick online. I don't know if it was on the show or if somebody was in the crowd. It hung there like a cloud. It was weird. Yes, yeah, so the, the the smoke lingered. Maybe it was part of the funeral. Julie really had that ten bell salute. Ah, yes, oh, yes. Maybe they cremated FTR. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yes. The creepy Julie, Julia. There's <laughs> another one. This this very attractive young woman is ringing a bell. Yeah. And we're told how creepy it is. Yep. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about? I am up. so sick of creepy shit. I don't want to see it anywhere. In AW, NXT, WWE, this this was a thing during the pandemic. The pandemic is over. We can get rid of the creepiness. It sucks. Mm-hmm. All right. Q&A? I sure. suppose so. All right. Time for the weekly live Q&A. So if you have any questions, put them there in that, uh, in that chat. And uh, if you're one of those people that always wants to ask a question, but uh, you're not up for the chat or whatever, you can... Follow me on Twitter, SuperFollow, and uh, super followers get to ask questions as well. And I got a thread here of questions from uh, from our friends on Excellent. Twitter. This person says, what is your all-around favorite era of pro wrestling? For example, the 80s, the Monday Night Wars, the current day era, the early mid-90s, etc. I say this as someone who's been watching regularly now for, gosh, yeah, 40, 40 years, I think. Uh, do not underestimate how great it is what we're going through right now do not look down, do not take it for granted that's fair it not used to be like this guys yeah <laughs> sure you even the, the the precious beloved monday night wars weren't nearly this good no but you know what let me say this 80s i found a lot of stuff i liked in the 80s 90s early 90s even i was young i found some stuff i liked during that era mm-hmm. monday night wars yeah, WCW came a fucking train wreck, but I found a lot of stuff I liked during those Monday Night Wars. Then there was about, uh, you know, 2001 yeah. to about, uh, I don't know. A- end of WCW to birth of AEW would be the low point. I don't know if I'd say that. I would. But there was a lot of there was a lot from uh, the 2000s I was not a fan of. But, you know, in the, in the you know, I'd say 2010 to... Uh, 2017, 2018, there was still a lot, I found a lot of stuff to like during that period. You know, there was a lot of great stuff in New Japan, and there was some good stuff in WWE. I went to all the manias and enjoyed them. But 2018 to 2000, I can't even say that, 2018, fucking terrible. Probably the worst year I ever watched pro wrestling was 2018, because there was no AEW. I'd given up on TNA, and WWE was the worst I ever saw, ever. It was the worst WWE ever. And then 2019, AEW started, and I found plenty to enjoy from 2019 through today. So really, it was the uh, decade of, of uh, the, the 2000s that I think was the, the dirt worst. But the single dirt worst year I've ever seen was 2018. Hmm. Yes. I, uh, at the time, the mid to late 90s when ECW was coming on the scene and everything got very violent and very hardcore, at the time... 
I thought that was the greatest thing ever. Now, <laughs> since we've gone back and watched a lot of that, and I realized it wasn't as great as I thought. But I did have the most fun watching wrestling probably during that time. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.